All right, guys, it's time for the next level guy show. A men's interview, interest, and improvement focused podcast featuring interviews with the greats from all industries to help you better your life. Each week, a new episode features an interview with one of the greats, covering all aspects of their story, from life hacks to tips and protocols that have allowed them to live life on the next level. We then highlight concrete action steps that you can use to improve your life. And now, your host, Ian Dawson McKay. And today's guest is Kenneth Play. Kenneth is an international sex expert and sex educator. Named the world's greatest sex hacker by GQ, he's been featured in over 100 media outlets. Kenneth has been a guest lecturer on female sexual pleasure and his work has helped millions of men gain lasting confidence and competence in the bedroom. AskMen.com described Kenneth's most recent course as having at least one nugget of sexual learning you've almost certainly never encountered before, if not several. He's an Asian immigrant with an average sized penis, is how he often introduces himself, who lived most of his early life with crippling sexual insecurity, determined to overcome this anxiety. He dedicated his life to studying the complexities of academic sex research along with exploring the mysteries of Tantra, immersing himself in the forbidden world of BDSM and even joining the lustful chaos of underground sex parties. His quest worked and today GQ calls Kenneth the world's greatest sex hacker and men's health column the Orgy King and he's now ready to tell you exactly what he's learned. In Beyond Satisfied, his new book, Kenneth shares the sex hacking secrets he successfully taught to millions of men. This book is like a cross between Bruce Lee's mixed martial arts approach and Tim Ferriss's 80-20 rule, but for sex. Far from being just another find our clitoris guide, Beyond Satisfied distills hard science and hands-on experiences into techniques that any man can successfully put into practice. In this book, you'll learn scientific secrets that unlock her hidden orgasmic potential and gain a huge array of skills that will get you results right now. You will learn how to overcome performance anxiety like a world-class athlete, fulfill her naughtiest fantasies by understanding her erotic mind, curate a 90-minute orgasmic experience, fuck like a beast with any size penis, help her experience squirting for the first time. With this system in this book, you can transform your sex life beyond what you thought was possible, beyond mind-blowing, beyond connected, and beyond satisfied. And now, let's get to the interview. Well, thank you so much for coming back on. You were a star of number 83, and once I knew you had your pod, your new book coming out, I knew I had to get you back on. But for a quick refresher, yeah. those who maybe don't recognize the, the star that you are, could you give a quick introduction? Well, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a star, but... My name is Ken and Play. I am a the GQ called me the world greatest sex hacker. But what really happened is I learned to overcome my own sexual insecurity and learn so much about female pleasure that I accidentally became a world expert. And because I taught fitness for a really long time and I apply the same fitness model in teaching sex. But more than anything, um, I think what I really help my clients do is to adapt a growth mindset to sex, that sex is something they could learn, they could master, just like mm-hmm. learning how to cook, and any self-imposed limitation. And it's not necessarily true, you know? And I think a lot of people suffer that think they're sexually broken. And what I really want to do is help them find the sexual confidence by increasing their competence in this arena. And they could live the happiest sex life that, you know, that is perfect for them. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I love the way that you focus the book on the female pleasure. You know, we don't see that much in especially the pickup scene nowadays. So was that the inspiration to make a kind of powerlifting manual for the to level up her sex life? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've been watching all I've been doing some deep dive on what their pickup artist community become in 2022. Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating how technology and the philosophy have evolved. But 
I don't think that is the solution because what it ultimately creates is you try to game a very difficult situation where no one is happy, you know, like it, people don't end up being happy that way. If there are, you are taking advantage of their situation and environment you're in, I think we could collectively do better. And mm -hmm. one of, one of the key things that I think is really powerful for, for any straight man who love women, who wants to be in a relationship, love, uh, love to have sex with them, is that if you're really good in bed, it makes a huge difference. So there's the part that, you know, like I focus on getting them into bed and then you're absolutely awful <laughs> when you actually do it. It's <laughs> like you do all the restaurant promotion when your food is garbage. It's kind of crazy. So, so I, I think... Uh, one of the beautiful thing about being really good in bed or having a really good restaurant and when your food is good, the line will build, you know, so no. I'd rather teach that. And, you know, it's, if it's a meal's good, they're going to keep coming back again and again. And yeah, yeah. I was really surprised there wasn't such, like, this is a phenomenal piece of work. You know, you've got a very detailed, there's a lot of scientific papers to back up what you're saying in it. But you mentioned, you, you know, you struggle with dyslexia and you get really kind of very open about your own sex life and what you see as your past mistakes and, you know, with women and stuff. Was it cathartic in a way? Did it help you come to terms with that? Because I love how we can connect with the material better because you give a personal example. I think I've been feeling, uh, I, I thought, you know, when I became a sex educator, one of the biggest challenge is overcoming your own internal sexual insecurity and shame. What I really want to share with my audience is how I personally overcome those things, especially when you think about it. I talk a lot about cock size in that one. You think you are born with it and then you are fucked. Mm -hmm. And over, overcoming that internal struggle and showing people there's light at the end of that tunnel and the, the signs that backs it up, I think it. my intent is to to be vulnerable enough so that people could see themselves climbing out of that hole because that is a dark insecurity that could like never be filled if you don't work through your own personal uh, shame with it or, or insecurity around it. And then there's so many men out there that I know that so fixated on how big they are, how hard they could get and how long they could last. And that's the only thing they think of themselves as a lover. Hmm. And that is it's such a terrible sex myth. <laughs> Believe me, like women are not complaining that guys' dick don't work. They are complaining on how they, how they, how they use uh, it. <laughs> how to use it. Um, and statistically, you know, most penises fit most vagina. And, you know, that's why I really want to overcome those myths. But as far as uh, their experience for me is concerned, in many ways, throughout this whole process of becoming a sex educator, it helped me overcome all those things along the way. And I thought it was really worth sharing that story. And, you know, the reason they call me a sex hacker is that, like, my dyslexia is really bad and I have to figure out a way to write this book. And it took me mm -hmm. a lot longer than an average person because I can't read it the same way. So I have to use a lot of software to have it read it back to me. It's like painting colorblind. So the people have to describe the color to me. So I have a scribe that, you know, two people and a research assistant and people really help me uh, with the language itself. And so I could make sure that I express my idea correctly, but it's so tedious to do this over and over again. Yeah. But I'm really proud of the end results. And I found a way to hack writing a book when you don't have that skill or that ability. No. Right. I mean, it is phenomenal, the, the level of detail and connection, building confidence, going into consent. You know, you you don't just show us how to be like a legend of a lover. You show how to actually connect with your partner. So why do you think guys struggle with sex? You know, why do we stick to the one trick pony? You know, oh, I'm, I'm not letting her see me in this form. I can't ask her about her orgasms. Why do you think we struggle to be open and honest? And how do we use this book? along with your amazing hands-on um, other series, like your Sex Hacker series? I don't think is guys' fault in some way because there is like a nature and nurture problem, right? So the, the, the nature part is that, of course, we want to impress our partner. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like that's how mate selection happens. Nature is kind of cruel. So we have to pretend that we know how to do something when we never, were never taught how to do it. And what really mm. blows women's mind is to have an experience they didn't even know was possible, but we are never taught how to communicate. We are never taught the techniques. So there's this expectation. So their byproduct is some guys have to develop a crazy ego, right? So it's self-suiting not to find out if she had an orgasm or not. You know what I mean? Or they pretend yeah. not to care so they don't have to feel that pain of that experience. So I don't think men are inherently evil. And I don't, you know, I think a lot of, unfortunately, there's a cultural shift, you know, in that information. Uh, and also there is this desire to be really awesome, right? But you're not taught at the same time. So it's very difficult. I mean, you talk in the book about how sex is not just a physical act, it's an emotional connection with a partner, how, you know, they can cry, how they can scream out for their deities and things like that, you know, when they get good sex. How yeah. do we get this through to guys? I mean, you have some amazing QR codes that you can scan to see the to see how to do that. each amazing thing. Um, but how do we get guys to understand to stop focusing on the porn? You know, like it's not the penetration because you've said it's like learning to drive by watching the Fast and the Furious. You know, if you try yeah. watch porn to get better lower, how do we get through to guys that there's plenty more things you can do than just grind and hope for the best? It's unfortunate because porn have such a like huge impression to the amount of consumption that we all have. So we have this like framework of what it should look like because of like just the frequency and consistency of exposure. But their porn actresses are not expressing authentic reaction. Like everybody is pretending and acting. But we, are, although our, our logical mind understand, but what we expect and what we feel is completely skewed. Like how many times you watch a fast food commercial and you look at that burger and it's fucking beautiful. And you know that shit is fake, just like fake boobs. Like our system is so easily cool, right? Like we know is a bag of silicone in there, but it still works for our brain. So mm -hmm. I think it takes, I think it's harder in modern time for people to get better in bed because there's so many misinformation. Even if you could clearly see as bullshit, you still can help it is one of the fundamental problems that we struggle in 2022. Um, the other side is that if the guy never have mind blowing connected sex, right? Then they don't know what they were missing. It's like if you never taste a real tomato or a real egg that is not factory farm, you actually don't know what it is, how amazing it can be. So I really want guys to be introduced or people to introduce to this experience that they're robbing themselves of. You know, there's a difference between the metaverse versus real life. They just haven't really experienced it yet, you know. Because I really like in the book how detailed each section is. It's how like you use the five second rule when discussing consent. You know to explain to people how what consent truly is and how to take it and how they can you know make sure your partner knows they can change their mind and you talk through what's acceptable, etc. Why do you think like how do you build that connection outside the bedroom to make it great in the bedroom? Because you go into a lot of good stuff in the book, but how do you start building these amazing connections with your partners so they can't the be open? Yeah, I think the first thing is that the golden rule that I put on the consent bit is that you are prioritizing her wellness, right, above all, like what's good for her. And if, she, if you're genuine about this thing, then you're earning trust and people feel safe. And then connection built starting from there. Because if you, as long as you're trying to get one over people or you're trying to get something from someone, right? Like you ever go to this networking thing, people just want to get something from you. Oh, yes. You can't start from there, right? So if you in, you're in a relationship where you are focusing on what you could give, right? And you're hoping that you trust that reciprocity will come back to you. That's a really great place to start in my view. And the second part is that when you discover what she really, like what really arouses women, you'd be so surprised how good the sex is. You know, all the novels, Fifty Shades of Grey, all those sexual fantasy, do you think it's written by men or women? 
women. Exactly. So mm. all the filthiest fantasy that you could possibly <laughs> think of is mostly female centric. That that's what most men don't understand. So if they want to have like the best sex, go into women's psyche. It's way more like it's way more delicious and rich and full than I don't think most. I, I, there's not that many great uh, erotica written by men for that reason. So there's a wealth of uh, like um, beauty in that. So how do we explain to guys that? This isn't a slap against your masculinity, you know, to lose the ego and to to embrace the book because you go into meta learning, neuroscience, you really give some amazing examples how to really connect and blow each other's minds. But how do we get guys to lose the ego in the first instance, but also to make women understand that they deserve great sex, that they, they're not to just pretend because the guy's after what he wants, that you're actually going out to connect and whatever it takes to help each other get the pleasure they deserve it's actually not about in my view it's not really about the guy losing his ego and humble himself like it's it's really a lot of times guys are already pretty good but they want to learn they want to have a competitive advantage it's like game recognizing mm -hmm. game. so if you want to develop as an nba player you do look at other nba player and see how they play the game and you come up with your own style so when i teach other like as you could see from the book i'm not teaching you to be more like me i'm giving you a framework for you to develop who you are as a lover yeah and how you improve your game so i'm discussing the game rather than you suck you should learn from me that was never my position so when when other men pick up my book, when they actually read it, they realize I'm talking to them. I'm not talking at them. I'm not talking down at them. I'm sharing information on how I overcome those lessons. Like, w where did I go wrong? And then I realize those insight. And then if people are nerdy, they will love it because I'm so practical and technical. <laughs> like, I skip a lot of the fuff. I'm going like, this is exactly how you do it. I don't, hmm. I don't. I don't give you I like I'm so literal because I taught fitness before. I'm going to show you a squat and this is how you squat and this is the center of gravity and this is how you position your body. So I think that's one thing that a lot of my students have been telling me. I go like, I wish they taught sex this way. Like everything Definitely. is like and concept. I teach them like literally how to do something. And I think they really appreciate that. Because I love, like, I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan, and I love how you go into deconstructing skills. You use neuroscience to to back up the data. You use, you link it in with scientific papers, and then you know you're talking about minimum effective doses to get success. You know, it's like it is phenomenal yeah. how everything's backed up with science, but it's also explained in a in a very supportive and confident way. How do we use like meta learning and neuroscience to enhance the pleasure of our partner and their orgasms you know and also uh, this is this is this is so hard for me when i wrote this book i really picked out the like 20 percent that gives you 80 percent of the result like this mm -hmm. is the best part like there's so much i wanted to teach right but then the book will be too long and it doesn't work i really picked out the best neuroscience that you like this is the things that you need to understand that you're going to have an unfair competitive advantage over your your friends if you just understand how that system work then you have like got like power if you get, if you get it so why what why i love it so much on the neuroscience part is that if you understand like like internal orgasm right every guys want their dick to be the key to the lock right but they have to understand the level of arousal and also pressure like women respond to pressure better than fiction. So if you could, if you understand the fundamental principle on how those orgasms work and you edge her all the way there, you could learn how to unlock any, like use your key to unlock anything if you figure mm -hmm. it out. So, so I really put in that, that science to help people go to a pretty advanced level. So you could go from beginner level to combine all the systems together. Cause you do say that in the book, it's, you could have the most amazing technique possible. But if your partner's not aroused, it's worthless. It's pointless. So why do you think guys would come in and say, okay, that worked for my last partner. 
but it's not working for her. I'm not changing it up. I'm staying at what I know works. How do we calibrate with new partners? Because you, you talk in the book about listening to the change in her breathing, listen to the noise she makes, look at the facial expressions. How do we start going into these micro expressions and picking up on the new signs to know if a partner's enjoying it, what we need to do? Because you use a great example about how to finger them to get them aroused. How should we use this to learn what a, you know how a partner likes to be touched and aroused, etc.? Well, the first thing is that you, you have to learn how to feel. And the feeling is not just feeling her, but feeling your own body. Like, are you mm. hearing the sound that is coming out of her? Are you feeling the subtle change in... It's like reading erotic cues. And I think the primal part of us, like the hunter and tracker in us, that part hasn't been like worked on a bit, you know, like we only recognize sign from a computer screen. Like we only see the notification. So we mm. respond to the notification, but we don't use our physical body as much, our senses, the way we used to. So I think there is underdeveloped in some way and not using those tools because, you know, your notification on your phone is goddamn is clear, right? Yeah. But you have to learn how to feel the subtle changes. Like people who are good hunters, they could hear the wind move and where the deer is moving directionally <laughs> because they develop that sixth sense. So, for, yeah. But it's really not that hard. So I really break it down on what to pay attention to. The second thing is that if you pay attention, just that you care and you pay attention, she'd be mind, like, she mind blown from there that you notice what she's experiencing and you care. And that start the reciprocity loop be between two people. And there is two different things. There is proprioception, like you could feel what's outside of you, like how you, and interoception is what you feel inside your body. You know, sometimes when you know people are lying, but you just like, there's no sign real, like you see a little bit, but you feel it in your body that your spidey sense. Yep. So there is a spidey sense for sex as well. And once you develop it, then, is kind of a superpower and then, and then the last the the last part of your question why being a one trick pony because everybody have a their unique pleasure wiring just like people have different preference on food based on their genetic and their culture like what food they grew up in so that will be the byproduct of how this person developed their sexual preferences and what turns them on and their sexual history hmm. so of course you can feed the exact same meal to everybody and hoping they will like it. But when you make some delicious meal, most people will like it. So you could, so there's that variance, you know? Because I love that bit in the book where you said that, you know, you wouldn't use the GPS to your ex-girlfriend's house to find your new girlfriend's house. So why would yeah. you use the same exact techniques to go there? But how do we get yes, the girl? Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. But how do we get them to kind of understand that we're not just out to, you know, wham, bam, thank you. How do we get them to understand is like, we want to, you know, like expand your pleasure as much as ours, that we want them to be open and honest and tell us the fetishes, the desires, when things are not working to look at it as like a sex lab that we've created between us, that this is all about mutual benefit and pleasure not just what we're getting. Their mutual pleasure is so mind blowing. I think guys are so underestimated. They are trying to like steal a snack when they could have the restaurant. Do you know what I mean? Love it. You know, when you really truly open her sexuality up and you open yours, like the range of possibility is remarkable. And when you get to play at that level between two people, the experience is transcending for a lot of, and, and borderline spiritual for a lot of people. You really get to reveal who you are and you really get to see that person and the connection is really mind blowing. So, but it is a longer investment. That's what it, it comes down to because it's a little bit of the marshmallow test. It's a little bit of a delayed gratification. But what you get in return is so abundant. It's uh, indescribable. Because I know that from my own kind of experiences, like some girls will say, I've never had a guy want to go down on me so much. And I was like, what? It's like, I don't, I don't get why girls seem to be taught that it's like, they've just got to try to get as much pleasure from it as they can, or they've got to fake it, not to hurt the guy's feelings. You know, that 
they're almost like second class when it comes to sex and it's anything but and it's it really annoys me just that there's so many selfish lovers out there and i think this is the great thing about the book is you're showing people how sex can be next level when you actually think about the pleasure you're given but how do we stop cock blocking ourselves you know how do we avoid letting that voice in our head saying no, no, you know, you're not worth it. You know, you're small penis, you're this, you're that. Because, you know, you go in a great detail about like the penis length and different vagina sizes, etc. But how do we stop that little voice in our head that says, really, you think you're going to satisfy her? You know, how do we stop ourselves fucking up before we've even got in bed? The good news is that you don't need to stop it. And those voices never go away for for anybody great too. Like you don't think you don't think uh, Michael Jordan have a moment of doubt. You know he trained himself. It's not like he's he doesn't feel those things. I think mm-hmm. great athlete and great champion learn to work with that voice in their head. But the thing about competency is that when you have real competency and you know what you're actually doing. Is very different when you play basketball, you're Michael Jordan playing basketball or Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen. Like it feels completely different, but you're never mm-hmm. going to get there if you let that voice rob you from expanding your, your, your skill, your skill level and your competency. But once you get it, boy, if you talk about satisfaction, I talk about beyond satisfied, right? As in many ways, it's about the part about giving her pleasure. But it's so satisfying when you know what the fuck you're doing and you're doing it, <laughs> like for the person who's doing it. So it's not; it goes both way. Because I love how like detailed it is, and there's like the angles to show you of where of how to put your finger, the level of pressure to put in. Then you click onto the QR codes, and it takes you exactly there. But you don't just go into how to make them orgasm or how to give them how to make them squirt and stuff. You know, you go into things like aftercare, which is almost like. Most you know, you, most guys seem to think it's oh, go get something to eat after. But I love how you talk about the goddess baths. You talk about make you know all the the emotion that's built up during sex and the connection. How you need to be there for each other. How you can connect better after it and after after the act. How do we start using aftercare? You know, how do we implement aftercare to make sure that we're connecting better afterwards. I also think it's that sometimes like men think we're doing those tricks just for, for women, like to give mm-hmm. them aftercare. It's really about completing their entire experience of connecting with someone and their level of generosity from the other side. I don't know how many guys have gotten a blow job from a woman that you just gave her the best sex of her life, that blowjob is very different than the blowjob that she would give you in a normal circumstances. Yeah. So it's really about you being awesome. You know, it, 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 in some way, it's the real hero's journey when you are really earned the admiration that you're receiving. It's a completely different experience and. And all the emotional connection, men need aftercare too. If they have a mind blowing sexual experience themselves, it just reciprocity is what it really is. But I think some of the deepest moving experience that we could have is do a sexual connection. And when you are able to, it's not just like, it's not one way, right? Like giving and then receiving. Sometimes it flips. Sometimes you are doing it you are doing it for it because it's pleasurable for you. So I, I use Betty Martin's wheel of consent example. So all yeah. those experiences is not just you giving someone this experience. You could get something out of it, right? And there is something really beautiful about their balance between selfishness and selflessness in sex. So some of the most beautiful experiences is very selfish and some of the most beautiful experiences is selfless. So is there is a dance between those two, like more of a yin yang philosophy. And so I'm not teaching guys to only be selfless, right? But it's not only be selfish. It's just they're just a flow of that energy. Like hmm. you give your partner an experience that she never had before. She be the most open, like, please use me for your pleasure. Like they be in that zone. And it's yeah. so hot. 
and it's from this place that I don't think a, a lot of men have experienced before when it's when it's genuine. And then how how do you give that sort of sex positive mindset? How do we encourage the them to be open, honest, to you know, to trial different things, to say the thing that you know the that they've really wanted, to not ne- feel the need to fake orgasms, to like you're saying, to just that share that energy, be open, honest in the moment, and feel safe to explore themselves and their their pleasure. I think it all really comes down to more than what you say is how you behave, like what you do. Hmm. You know, if you show up that way and you being that way. I don't know if you ever met people who are really genuine and they're good. Like there, there are certain people with certain leadership skill that it just creates that following. Like, like, or, you know, someone who is really supportive. You go like, wow, that people are really looking out for me. Yeah. Those experiences we are hardwired to feel. So we, we tend to make it more complicated than what it is. And, and, and funny enough, I just teaching people how to be real. Like, don't pretend. Like, if you really don't care about her pleasure, she will sniff it out, right? Yeah. Eventually. So if you're genuinely caring about her pleasure, I think also in my experience, women are so incredibly generous when you are generous to them. You know, Cause a lot of the time, not always, but often enough that is worth the bet. So I just think that bet is worth taking. It's time for a quick break. There are millions of potential products to buy, so how do you know which ones are worth your hard-earned money? Simple. You go to nextlevelguy.com slash affiliates and explore those that will transform and improve your life. You'll find deals, listener exclusives, and special offers with some great companies. Recommendations are 100% honest and only on items Ian has tried or believes in. The companies showcased will make you a better man in all areas of your life. Simply go to nextlevelguy.com slash affiliates and level up. Because in the book, I mean, you talk about creating a play lab where you can experiment and have fun and enjoy yourselves and, you know, build a practical hands-on experience bit. Just take all the the drama out of it, you know, and just have fun with you and your partner or partners. How do we start working on our skills? How do you know? Because Tim Ferriss in the in the four hour body, he talks about giving a fifteen minute orgasm to a girl and getting her to, to lie back and say, "This is nothing to do with me. This is all about you." You know, try get into the mindset. How do we start getting them to understand that? They don't have to give because we've given. This is all just finding what makes us enjoy ourselves. Yeah, it's it's that whole dance between being selfish and selfless. Mm -hmm. And the other part is the idea of a play lab is that I spend a lot of energy on their how do people actually acquire skills and learning. So you got to have some time where there's lab time where you're practicing something versus you feel like you're on stage doing something. So if you could separate those time where there's less at stake, right? Like you are just here to try things out. And then when you get a place where you could try things out, they feel like also your partner want to try things out too. It's not just like you go to try something on her. She more likely want to try something on you. So it's this, it's creating a, a, a container and negotiating a container. And I gave very specific skills on how to negotiate as well on the book. Like yeah. this is how you could actually talk about it this is how you bring things up so there's a lot of practical framework that i give people on how to to initiate that process and i think the other thing is most i think a lot of people when they try to bring those things up right with the right attitude and not placing your ego on it most people are pretty receptive to it you know and do you think there's like since COVID that we've kind of lost, a lot of people had lost the connection and now we're kind of understanding the importance of people in our lives. So is this a perfect time to use your book, do you think? I th- I think there's a perfect time to, there's always a perfect time to level up your your 
life skill. And I think sex skill is one of the life skills on how you relate to people. Mm -hmm. And I think people are having a tough time just feeling connection, like belonging and, and those deep emotion that we used to feel like now our, we have reduced our connection to see how many followers we have on an Instagram. And that is not Sad the time. measure. Yeah, that is not mm -hmm. the measure. And, you know, ultimately, I really want men and women to really feel the genuine connection that is, hasn't been hijacked by tech, tech company. Um, and once you feel it, you the craving will be there because it's wired in us, you know. So is there a way that we can sort of gauge arousal or does it, is it so unique to the person? Are there sort of key things that guys should start looking out for with their partner? You know, like, is it blood flowing to the labia? Is it the breathing becoming more rapid? Because it's really difficult not to go into techniques and stuff in the book, because I think everybody needs to check this out. But are there sort of golden rules that you think all guys need to remember when it comes to sex and building arousal? Well, I think I lay out their erotic cue quite a bit, right? So there's signs, so sound, right? Movement, breath, you know, words they say. It depends on how verbal the person is. But yeah. ultimately, it's like being a comedian. You could feel the audience. But the problem is, like, we just tell jokes and don't look if people laugh. You know, that's the problem with, like, <laughs> like sex. Like, they are doing an act, right? But they're just not checking in with the audience. They're not looking. And... When, when there is no, like when you see there's like no, no feedback, like that person is like a dead fish there, you know, there, that is actually a signal, like that's quickens. Mm -hmm. And that signal is that is not funny. So, so that's usually one sign. Although in some cases, when, when they're fully aroused and they're about to come, some of them go dead silent for a period of time, like 30 seconds to a minute. So you, those are individual. But usually the signs are pretty clear and pretty universal. And is our sexual confidence linked to our personal confidence? If we become happier, healthier, more confident people, does it kind of, you know, does it open up our our confidence in our sexuality and understanding of ourselves, do you think? I think it works in both ways. The more confident you are in other arenas in your life, of course, it's going to help. But that's one of the things that you cannot outsource because hmm. you could be Jeff Bezos in the boardroom, but it doesn't mean that you are the king in the bedroom either. You know, it does not, it does not transfer. So, and you don't want, I, I mean, I, I, I got to kind of turn on by group sex, but most people don't want to outsource their, outsource their sex <laughs> to another person. <laughs> This is where it really comes down to your personal connection with that person. You know, like your secretary cannot buy you that gift. You know, it is one of those things that you you want to kind of master. So, yeah, it does not. But the things that actually build confidence is competence. As you know, it's like you don't even you, 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 like David Chappelle doesn't need us to tell him anymore that he's funny. Like it, it is hmm. there. You know, so so because of what he can do over and over and over again. And that is something so pleasurable that I wish more people would know, like what it's like to have that experience in the bedroom. And I'm telling you from a guy who was such a shit show in the bedroom and transformed <laughs> that. It's not like I always felt that I was a porn star. It's easy. Like I was like people would stop dating me and fucking me because of my sex is so horrible to turn that around is, 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 is what I have gone through. Cause you've, you've done this amazing transformation and to, you couldn't imagine you as the person you describe in the book. And that's what I love about it is like, you're so open and honest and vulnerable about saying, this is what I did. This is how I fucked up a threesome. This is how I was hiding my penis because I was worried it was too small. And then, you know, how you break it down, all the the crap, the bullshit the guys hold, and we go, oh, no, I can't do that because of this. And you're going, well, this is what I found. Here's the evidence to back it up. Here's the data that disproves it. Get on with it. How should we use the book? How should we go forward and take this and go, perfect you know even if can we do this if we're single can we do this with like people we've met one nighters things like that sex parties how do we start implementing these new skills in our life 
I think that's why I broke it down more like a video game, like mm -hmm. a tutorial. So you could start leveling up each skills. Like you could level up your finger game, your penetration game, your anal game, to your kink game, to your multiple orgasm game. And then the more skill that you develop, you become more prolific, you know, as in your repertoire of, of skills you have. And she doesn't even know what hit her as she develops. <laughs> But ultimately, you need some foundational skill. And that's just the foundation itself. It will put you in the top 1%, right? Because most guys just either play with their partner like their last girlfriend or, or whatever last success was, yep. or they just like close their eyes and basically like put a earplugs and blindfold on and tell jokes like <laughs> as a comedian and not hear any feedback, you know, like they're legend in their own mind. So they are, if, if they start to see, and unfortunately, you know, some women fake it, you know, they, they don't want, like, they like you enough that they want to keep the relationship, but don't want to tell you how, like, eh, you know, they don't want to hurt your ego. Right. So mm -hmm. there, there's that too. I think it's sad isn't it, that some people are willing to sit there and what should be this primal deep connection act where you both hit some level of, you know, like Nirvana, that some people are willing to just go, yeah, I'm just, I don't get orgasms. Uh, you know, I'm, I take too long. And I, how, I, I, I think the book is so great because it's going to start breaking down that stigma that women feel, you know, that they, they can't get an orgasm in. They can't, they've got to rush it or guys are too selfish or all these kind of things. You know, the book explains to guys how they can be better lovers, how we can connect better. But what was the proudest part of it for you? You know, was there a favorite part that you enjoyed writing the most? I think the most vulnerable part was the consent bit, you know, and really talk about that whole experience. And I'm not talking it from a high horse, you know, it's like, mm. how do you not? And, and and go do that because human relationship is complicated. I think talking about some of the lessons I learned, like you said, where I, I learned from my own mistakes, you know, like I thought I was I thought I was a legend learning one like one squirting skill, and then you realize <laughs> that oh you're just a one trick pony and then your ego is attached to it. So everything that most people do, I've probably done it myself. So I'm not telling you from I never make those same mistakes. I just really focus on how I overcome those and the insight I got. And I think there's second, there are other things that I'm really proud of, maybe not specifically, well, there, it just, okay, that's one part that is probably too nerdy for people to appreciate. But I went super nerd level to hack freaking 2D diagram in black and white <laughs> by creating all those QR code, all those additional information to have a more high tech print book. You know, that, that has yeah. a lot more, uh, a, a different learning model and a teaching model mm. and substitute content. So I'm really proud of that technical innovation. And I think the part that I'm most proud of is 35 to 40% of my audience is women. They buy my book. And yeah. that is a very hard thing to achieve. Go get a bunch of women to buy a pickup book. <laughs> you <Yes>. know <laughs> yeah so that's a that's a su surprising statistic for me when i figure out like most most women are hey and the other thing i learn is and this is a gross generalization and and super focus on hero couple but most women don't want to teach their guy how to fuck them right they, they it's not a turn on for most most women so they want me to do that job you know yeah. Or share some skill with with other men, and she, like a lot of women, their joke is that I be having what she's having, like that's that's the level of communication they like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and to go, I mean, if you could change sex education for schools for like people, everybody growing up, would that be what you would put into it to embrace? Like, because when we did it, it was you. Don't wrap up. You can have. You can make a baby. Would you want the people to them to talk about masturbation, pleasure, erogenous zones to actually understand that sex isn't dirty? It's more than just making babies. There's connection, confidence, this whole different world of sex. This whole sex positive mindset. This whole 
open side sex that's very rarely taught to kids when they're younger? Well, I have so so much opinion around that topic. Like the first thing is that I think there is life skill that everyone should learn when they're young because that's really shaped their experience. Like things like understanding nutrition, like understanding basic fitness stuff. Like how do you get stronger? How do you lose body fat? How do you get strong? How do you get muscle? Like all those things, if you learned it when you're young, like how do you create more flexibility mm. to how does pleasure just talk about the subject like a matter of factly, right? How do you become a, a person who's better at studying? Because most people never learn how to study, right? Those things, I think there's life skills that every young person could really benefit for the rest of their life, especially like from the neuroscience perspective, your earliest sexual experience really inform your brain and its development on what sex is. And if you start out things being difficult, it will continue to be more difficult. So, and it is not inherently difficult. We just fuck it up. So I wish most people would learn to have pleasurable, mutual, satisfying sex whenever they're ready in their life early. So they could have that as a reference point, as a baseline, rather than deal with all the sexual problems that I see in my clients that is so unfortunate and so unnecessary. And that's the thing, isn't it? A lot of it's so unnecessary. It's we've let social economic factors or like family pressures and stuff or this bullshit thing of you must have kids by this time, you must be married by this time. And you know, we've we let society dictate, not what we and our partner want to do in life. Um I know we're coming up to our time, but how would you want people to use the book going forward? Is there a a good way for them to use the book? Should we just use it as a pick and mix of the skills we're trying to improve? Or are there key areas you think every guy listening should go, that's my first chapter? I, I mean, it's I all phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I hope the guy, I hope sincerely they took, invest in themselves to learn how to express themselves sexually. You know, it's just more than just learning another squirting technique. Uh, although those things are awesome, how to give, people like a expanded continuous 90 minute orgasm, orgasmic experience, those things that absolutely, in my view, worth knowing, but more than mm. anything, it will help people overcome a lot of bullshit. Like I thought because I don't have a, pen uh, a porn star size penis, I'm sexually worthless. So I, I just see so many people walking around, like I'm average height, I'm five nine, five feet and nine inches in the u.s and that's pretty like universal average height among the human population but most people when it comes to penis size they will walk around like i am four you know four feet five like the psychological aspect of it so mm -hmm. if anything if people could get rid of some of those sexual myths that ruin life ruin so many people's sex life and then I've seen so many, you know, women who have unmet, unmet sexual needs that it could be so easily solved. And I just really wish people understand it's really easy to solve that and everybody be happy. Like most women having sex with straight guys, like going to a restaurant and not getting their meal is kind of crazy. You know, so it's <laughs> I was stupid when you so think about it, like how so many things could be resolved by just chatting and being open and honest. And is that what you want people to take from this? That, you know, we can use the book to level up our skills and to start being open and honest with partners and to view sex as, uh, you know, to sample the menu rather than stick to your favorite course? Yeah, and it's also like a, a something that is worth mastering. This so, And also, like, I, I talk about it like you got to spend – like your whole lifetime mastering this. This is like equivalent to a college, a college level course. You know, as far as the effort is concerned, if you get an mm -hmm. A in this, you basically are acing your entire life in this domain. <laughs> so it's yep. that much effort. But even if you just learn one lesson and use that one lesson tonight, right? Spend 15 minutes on a technique. You will see it will make a huge difference for you. It's like if you, it's a guy watch all the porn in the world and want a partner to have anal sex with you. If you're good at anal sex, like how to introduce anal sex, how to warm up the butt, and she have an anal orgasm, do you think you would get a lot of butt sex for the rest of your life? Of oh, course, yeah. wow. right? So, 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 it, it's, it's that kind of thing, you know. 
and until we can get another one in and i mean i'd love to discuss your new project i don't know if that's something you want to talk about just now yeah, yeah, i want to foreshadow a little bit yeah um i mean how can we until we can get another round in and you know really go into things how do you want to people to contact you work with you use the book read the book and just keep you know use your sex hacker series how can we connect with you and work with you going forward well the book is definitely complementary to the sex hacker pro course so the book is is more stories and more than a lot of technique but their video courses teaching you like on videos how i literally do it with real people in a live demonstration they awesome. get to see how it's apply and then i also shot like you know show and tell technique to like in-game footage how you literally use in a non-instructional setting so you get to both watch like i'm teaching steph curry's jump shot to how he used that jump shot to win the championship like I show you all the side. So the combination of all those things is really useful. They could come find me at kenneplay.com. They could follow me on Instagram. And I think those are the two most like easiest places to find me. And to and since you mentioned, I want to drop a hint on a new program that I've been releasing soon. It's called Daddy Prime. So I turn, uh, I'm 41 right now. I turned 40 doing COVID, that whole saga. But I got really back to my fitness route and go like, I don't want my sex life to go down as I age. So how do I get back into prime shape? You know, for most men in their 40s, they're like at their prime career wise. So you don't want a diminishing sex life while you are kicking ass in life. So mm. I, I wrote a fitness book around anti-aging, right? How to optimize your hormones and have the best sex life when you look like a sex god at the same time. So I hope people check it out, too. Well, that's it for another week, and thank you for listening. It's now time to take what you've learned and use it to develop and enhance your life with the key points mentioned. Listen, try it, embrace it, use it, and crush it. Now's your time to hit that next level in your life. If you liked this episode, then please leave a comment on the show notes or a review of the show on your podcast platform. Everything helps evolve the show. Until next week, keep seeking the next level in your life.